Sharps Pros sent out this, which is the Badlands muzzle device. And it is something that I was really interested in when I checked it out because it's not machined, it's not welded, it's actually printed. I know. Who would have thought that printing would make its way where it can, in 17.4 stainless steel, to make something as intricate as this and as beefy as this? I mean, this is almost half a pound at 7.1 ounces, but that's exactly what they did. My name is Dave Tim. Thank you guys very much for spending a few minutes of your day checking out this video. And like I said, we're checking out this guy right here. Now, one of the things that uh, when I was talking to the owner and the developer of the product and... I kind of wanted to understand more about this whole process because that was kind of the most fascinating to me because I just, I don't have as much exposure to it. But the reality is with industrial grade printers, there are people even making suppressors. Uh, I believe Daniel Defense is making suppressors with printing. There's aero grade parts and stuff like that. And he told me, he's like, hey, I'm gonna send you one that's cut in half so you can check it out. And that's what I wanna show you guys first because there's a lot going on under the hood. So this is the cutaway. And as you can see, uh, literally this is the product and look at what is going on under here. And there's no way that you could machine all this in one piece. I mean, yeah, you could have a tube and then you could try to weld something in or machine something in, but you're not gonna get as much going on with this kind of internal core that's ported. And then you also have this internal uh, blast deflector basically here that is doing a job to really kind of reduce that concussive force felt to the side of a shooter. And it, directs everything down range. So there's no side port. So if we look at the whole thing here, there's nothing on the side. It basically all goes out the front. And then, like I said, when we open it, you can kind of see where that gas will fill this chamber here and then start to, to direct everything forward. Now, I definitely wanted to take a look at it. Now there is two versions available. I do have this guy right here, which is a 5 8 24. And what's cool is that as long as it's below 354 caliber, you can put this on. And I also do have the half 28 version on my SBR. The front opening of the Badlands is 354, which means that so long as it can thread on your barrel, any caliber that is under 354 is gonna work just fine. So obviously all the main ones, 223, 308, 300 blockout, but 354 also is the diameter of a nine millimeter. So it'll work on all your PCCs as well. Quick specs before I show you more range footage. 1.5 diameter, 275 in length, 7.1 in weight. So it's not a light muzzle device, but if you're looking for something to truly transfer that energy down range so it doesn't disrupt others, maybe in like a close quarter situation or competition bays or whatever it might be, this is something that is definitely uh, doing its job. Installation was really easy due to the large flats. However, I didn't have a traditional wrench big enough, so I used an adjustable quality wrench like this. And basically all I had to do was adjusted to the proper you know, width setting and then torque it on. Now it is recommended to use a small amount of rock set as well. Now, here's the cool part. I got to take this to the range and I primarily used it on my SBR. So this is a 10 and a half inch 223, uh, 556. This is a side charging JP15. And what I wanted to try is because I wanted to see if I would get any felt gas in my face, even though this one's pretty sealed up in the back and I didn't. And I wanted to also see how it would handle recoil, muzzle flash, muzzle rise, things like that. Now, as far as muzzle flash, I did notice some flash. So it is not a flash hider and it's not really advertised as a flash hider. It's advertised as a muzzle, boy, muzzle brake and blast deflector. So it does help break some of the recoil. I found that it shot relatively smooth, uh, no real issues. I didn't notice it was you know, very impulsive at all. And then as far as that deflector part of it, that's also what I wanted to test. So I shot this gun with a bare muzzle on the ground. As you can see, it's pretty much disrupting all of the area around me, okay? You can see all of this that I'm showing you on the screen with the bare muzzle. And you can see that it's basically disrupting everything. Then I put the Badlands on and it's reduced. You can see that we're not getting as much disruption in the areas of the screen that I'm highlighting here. But it did a good job of helping push more of that forward. Now, I also did some low light testing with it. Again, it's not a flash hider and with XM193, you can definitely tell it produces a flash compared to a bare muzzle as I'm showing you, compared to a flash hider, which I was using the dead air flash hider, which obviously does a great job at reducing the flash, but it doesn't deflect 
and direct everything downrange like the Badlands does. Now, when it comes to flash suppression, I definitely gave it a workout with the 10.5. There's a lot of unburnt powder, and that's just kind of a nature of the beast with SBRs, but then adding on that XM193 ammunition, definitely you could see that while it did a pretty decent job for the challenge at hand, there definitely was a flash. Now, I've also seen some other footage with the Badlands on longer barrels, 14 and a half, 16 inch, etc., and it did a much better job of disrupting that flash due to those internal cuts that help disrupt that unburnt powder. However, with the SBR, we did have a large amount of unburnt powder, and because the Badlands was directing everything forward, it kind of a collected mass, if you will, you are going to see some flash with SBRs, as you've seen. Now, what's cool is in the footage, you can actually see kind of where that percussion or where that blast is going, and it's going downrange just as designed, which I thought was pretty neat. Now, another quick test I did to try to simulate what people would feel is I put some paper up, and you can see that, yes, it does still move the paper. So if someone, you know, let's just say close quarter situation shooting near me. Now, granted, nobody should be standing there, uh, but I just wanted to kind of demonstrate things. But with the bare muzzle, you can see that the targets were basically ripped right off right away. Um, that percussion or that blast, if you will. Whereas with the Badlands, same paper, same clips, everything was the same. And as you can see, there was less disruption on the paper. It didn't fly off the hangers like it did with the bare muzzle. So definitely doing its job. Street price on this is right around $130. Now you can get this from a variety of dealers or Sharps Bros Direct. Uh, you can check out our webpage. We'll put some more information up there, things like that. Uh, I can't post direct links due to social media policies. But if you're looking for something that definitely will tame that percussion, that blast right around you, and you maybe can't run a suppressor in your state, or maybe you have a pistol in your state and you're looking for something a little less obnoxious, this would be something to consider. Obviously, it's not a sound suppressor, it's not a flash suppressor or anything like that, but it is what it is, and that is a deflector and a muzzle brake, and it does a pretty decent job at it for being this kind of one-piece design of really directing everything downrange. From my perspective, very pleasant. Even when shooting indoors with an SBR, it was very pleasant. Some SBRs are definitely really boomy, and especially indoors with you know basic A2s or muzzle brakes or other muzzle devices, and I didn't have any of those issues shooting this. That is the Sharps Brothers Badlands muzzle device. I hope you found this informative. Let me know what you think in the comments. What kind of setup would you run this on? What kind of you know configuration? What barrel length, caliber, whatever. Sound off in the comment section below. Let me know what you think or if you have any questions. If you have any questions about this or anything firearms related, go ahead and send us an email to the email address shown. That is theqagunsandtactics.com. And at the end of the month, I answer your questions. If you guys like the content, please like, share, and subscribe. We're on our way to 100,000 subscribers and we're going to have a huge giveaway. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so through our Patreon network. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.